Hey everybody, it's Andrew Brown from the AWS Cloud Project Bootcamp, bringing you another video. And this time we are going to do some additional cleanup after a deployment because I noticed DynamoDB was not running. Uh, the other thing was that I want to investigate a little bit more into that uh, deep, uh, uh, deep development mode or debug mode of the Flask server um, because, you know, I had talked to Baker previously and he said we shouldn't use it. And I didn't get a clear reason why. And so, um, I just want to do my own personal investigation here on the video and see whether we should replace it. Um, definitely we want to turn debug off because um, at the very least we don't want people seeing those error messages because that gives them too much information. And so that's what we're going to dive into as soon as I turn my light on. So just give me a second, okay? There we go, that's a lot better. I also started up my environment here. So the first thing I want to do is investigate the Flask uh, development or debug mode. Because uh, I want to know how do we turn that off and also is there any other kind of things that I should be worrying about. Um, so we'll go over here. Mm, and so here it says debugging error applications do not run the development server or enable built in debug uh, debugger in a production environment. The debugger allows executing arbitrary Python code from the browser. What? It can. I never noticed that. So maybe that's something we should check out right away and remediate while we're waiting here because that is such a uh, large security risk. What I'm going to do is make my way over to um, my load balancer SG and I'm just going to limit it to my IP address. And maybe that's what we should be doing, at least for the time being, is making sure that it's only accessible uh, for our own. Mm, and I did say earlier that it's probably a good idea that we do that. So that's what I'm going to do just to limit our risk here out to the wild internet, especially if it's arbitrary Python code. So what I'm going to do here is go into here and we'll go, whoops, <laughs> we'll go back to that security group. What the heck? We're, I thought I clicked into security groups here. EC2. And then we want security groups. And then we'll have our ALB. Here, and I'm just going to edit my inbound rules to only work for me. And so that's going to limit our risk. Um, we don't need, do we need these anymore? Four, five, six, seven, three thousand. No, because we don't do that anymore. Um, and so this is the only one we care about, which is open to the internet. So I'm just saying my IP, my IP. And so that's just going to resolve it. So now it's only my computer that's going to access it. So that debug thing is less of a concern now, but we don't really want it for production. So let's take a look at what they suggest. So use an error logging tool such as Sentry. Um, so Sentry is like log or sorry, um, Rollbar. And so we have Rollbar installed. Sentry is just another one you can use. If you have access to the server, you could add some code to this uh, external debugger uh, matching your IP. Um, the built-in where's Zerg development server provides a debugger which shows an interactive traceback and on the handle message, the debugger should only be used during development. Okay, so that's not saying we can't use the server for production. Uh, the debugger allows executing arbitrary Python code. That makes sense. Uh, the debugger is enabled by default when the development server is run in debug mode. So it uses the debug flag. I was also kind of wondering how we would do that. And when running the Python code, debug true enables debug mode. So app run debug true is another way to do it. External debuggers. Um, when using the external debugger, the app should still be in debug mode. What does this mean? External debuggers such as uh, provided by IDEs can offer more powerful debugging. Um, so we have no debugger, no reload, stuff like that. So it seems like we can just put these flags in and, and, and put it in a better state. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to our back end here. I'm going to make a new Docker file, call this one Docker file prod. And uh, instead of doing um, this flag debug one, I'm going to actually just explicitly put uh, the flag here, we're going to say here and go uh, debug. And so that should still allow us to do debugging. Okay. And for the production one, we're going to go here and basically do the same thing. Um, and I'll just paste this in here. But with the exception of this being debugging, you know, we can make this a bit easier if we want to bring these on multiple lines here because I don't really want to uh, be figuring this out all day here. So I'm just going to bring this into multi lines. I think I can do that, right? It'll let me do that. Um, I don't know. It's kind of making that weird syntax. So I don't trust it. So how about we, <laughs> how we go back and we'll just copy this again. I'm having copy paste problems. As you always know, when I'm working here, my copy paste is never does not work ever how I expect it to. Um, so for this one, that is fine. The debug, we can leave it on. Uh, for this, we'll say 
no debug, uh, no debugger, which I assume is for IDEs, not necessarily for um, roll bar and things like that, because we instrumented those separately. Um, and then we want no reload. We don't want this to reload. So that should be all the flags that we need in order for that to take effect. Okay. Uh, and so what I need to do now is, I guess, build this production one separately. And so in order to uh, build this one to test it to make sure it's doing what we, we expect it to do is I'm going to have to build it separately. So we'll do Docker build IT. Um, Actually, we specify the file, so we know we can do file. So that'd be docker file.prod. I'm going to call this one backend flask prod, and then we'll do a period. And that should build it, at least if I remember my Docker commands correctly. It's saying it doesn't know what the IT flag is. That's totally fine. We'll go look at our documentation to see what it is that we need to be able to do that. And I remember writing it in the week six Fargate here. So we'll go here and we'll look for docker build. Um, I could have swore it was in this one. Oh, sorry, we gotta go to the journal here, sorry. And we'll go into week six. Uh, Docker build here. Um, so yeah, hyphen T is the flag. Oh, there's no I being put in there. Uh, it's just F. So that's the name of it and that's the file. So we'll go back over here and we'll hit up. And I'll just adjust that. Yeah, so we'll proceed to go ahead and build that. And so um, send building Docker daemon, uh, no basic credentials. It's because we need to log into uh, our, our stuff here. And so I guess what I'll do is, man, I really wish this stuff here, the bin was at the top directory, but mm, I don't know if we should be moving that around right now. Because there's just some things that are not specific to backend Flask, um, like the, the login action, but... I'll have a think about it uh, because there are ones that are specific, like you do want them to be there, like the health check, but not all of them do we ne necessarily want them to be there. So that is something that I just keep thinking about every time uh, we're working through the application here. But uh, anyway, so what I'm looking for, what was I looking for? Uh, oh, logging in. So we'll go to login here to ECR. I really should make this a bin script. Um, so I'm going to go here and say, new file, new folder, uh, ECR. And I'm just gonna say new file, login. And we'll just be done with it here. Now we could be using uh, AWS CLI aliases and then we could use them anywhere. Um, but I don't know if we should break those out, at least not at this point. Um, again, that's something I cover in my AWS CLI course, which yet has been to be released because I'm doing this bootcamp. <laughs> so maybe the future will be done and you'll have done it as a prerequisite. Okay, so I'm going to go here. And so this should um, be what we'll use to log in. So we don't have to keep looking for that line in the code. And so I'm just going to go do bin uh, ECR login. We'll do that. And we'll see if that logs us in. It logs us in. So now I can go ahead and uh, build this because it has to pull down for that image. So it's going to pull down our Python version and build this. Um, and the one that builds will test this and make sure the debug mode is off and that the um, other stuff is in place there. So this will take a little bit of time, so we'll give it a moment, okay? All right, so that finished building. So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to, well, we're going to take a look here and get it running. So um, we'll do... Well, we have to make sure that we're running our Postgres uh, server locally because this one is reliant on those, um, those environment variables. But I guess we also have to set those environment variables as well. So what I'll do is I'll look for where we were running Docker before, um, this one here. And I guess we'll just update this to run the production one, eh? So we'll go down here. We'll go all the way to the bottom, okay? And this one will be for, well, this is the build. We want it for the run. Uh, Docker run. <laughs> okay, I'm just trying to think here. Uh, uh, passing NVARs to Docker run. I kind of feel like we did this before, so. Yep, 
Maybe ChatGPT can just give me the quick answer. I just don't feel like figuring out. So passing uh, NVARs to Docker run. Come on, ChatGPT, make it easy for me. Yeah, it's that hyphen E character that we can do. So we will give that a go and see if it works. I mean, I remember us doing that, but the question is, will it work? Um, I don't know. So we'll go down here. And so instead of uh, all this stuff, we're gonna have to do hyphen E for all of them. I know it's IT to run it. Um, and so here we would say uh, backend flask prod, and we'll take out uh, this line here because we don't need it. Hyphen, uh, hyphen RM, I believe, to clean up afterwards, which is something we might want to do. Um, which we seem to commonly do. And so then here we need all those flags or those uh, environment variables. So they're in our Docker Compose file. And so here it is. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna bring this over and I'm just going to paste them in. Uh, nice and, whoops, <laughs> nice and quickly here. Come on, you paste in, don't try to print. Okay, and so we do have quite a few there. Not sure why this is, uh, yeah, there we go. That's a bit better. Um, so the front end and the back end, that was for code space, we'll take that out. We will stick to using the local AWS endpoint, so that's fine. The connection URL will be uh, the local one is what I want, and I wanna use the local DynamoDB. Um, so these look all okay, um, but I'm gonna need some equals going on here. So we'll do this, and hopefully this works. I've never had good luck with the hyphen E uh, when you're specifying both the key and value, but uh, we'll try just the value and see if that works well. Okay, and so what I wanna do here is just, oh, I'm trying to, yeah, there we go, hyphen E. So that should do that there. And then I just need backslashes on all these. Now these of course don't have to be wrapped like that, but we'll just leave them as is because less work is better for me. I'm just going to bring that back to the wall. Um, and so I think that should run it um, and have all of our configuration. Of course, that is my local configuration. We'll go ahead and commit those changes. And I'm gonna go all the way down below here. We're gonna go ahead and copy this and see if this will allow us to run it. You might even wanna make a new folder here called Docker. And um, file will just say backend flask prod. And that way I don't have to keep typing this stuff in multiple times, so we'll paste that in. Um, and hopefully that will be something we can uh, continuously use. But we will run it first. Not like that, we'll do this here, okay. And so I just wanna actually copy paste this and see if this at least works. We'll hit enter. Uh, command not found. What the heck are you talking about? Of course it's found. Um, we'll look for Docker run here. Hyphen, hyphen R. Well, we will, we will need to do this. And there is the hyph the IT. So that one is correct for sure. Um, so definitely we'll want to uh, have some port mapping in here. So this will be four, five, six, seven to four, five, six, seven. Um, you know what, we just forgot the slash here. And then I'll just go back here and update this. Okay, we'll go all the way down to the bottom. We will paste this in. Great, and we'll go ahead and commit that. So now if we can get this running, just make sure Oh, give me a break. <laughs> IT is definitely a thing. Um, it's like it's not executing that line. Unknown shorthand R for in RM. Is it double, double hyphen for that? Docker run. Yeah, it is double. Of course it is. Uh, I guess it stands for remove. Um, so that makes sense. It's not like these ones, these are, this is INT. Um, so it's not exactly the same thing. So we'll go here and we'll try this again and we'll paste this in. Stop lying to me, it's definitely there. Um, so 
it's still having issues with that there. Huh. Copy. So it looks like here, let's just type clear and see what happens. We'll paste this in, paste. Invalid reference format. It's like it's missing the last line, it just refuses to take it. I don't know why. I mean, if the order doesn't matter, I could just lift this up and put this somewhere else and then we'll have less problems. So what if I just put it up here? Come on, copy and paste. Don't do that to me today. I'm going to cut this out. We'll bring this down and paste it. Let it enter. At least it, we got something else. So it says failed to create a shim. Uh, OCI failed to create it uh, for the hyphen E, path unknown. Not sure why we're having this issue, but what we're going to do is look at what Docker images we have and just see if we have it. So this one's called backend flask prod, just making sure that is correct. Backend flask prod, that looks right to me. So what the heck is wrong here? Um, I can try to also execute it from the uh, bin. I kind of prefer to do that, to be honest. And we'll do backend flask prod. It's because it's not executable. So we'll just do chmod u plus x here. And now we can just do backend flask like that. Fail to create the shim task. OCI runtime created fail. Run created fail. Unable to start container. Executable file not found in, pro, uh, in path. Never seen that one before. What does this error mean? Come on, ChatGPT, you can do it. Save me some time. Uh, there's an issue with Docker container startup. Uh, the container runtime failed, yeah. Uh, in this case, the error suggests the problem might be related to missing executable files. The container runtime is unable to find the executable file specified by hyphen E. Are you kidding me? It told me to use hyphen E up here. ChatGPT, are you lying to me? You can't trust this thing for anything. Let's just do man docker and, and take a look at what's here. For frick's sakes. Docker and vars run. It shows hyphen E. Site can't be reached. Great. What do you mean it can't be reached? Is my whole internet out? No, just the Docker website is out. Perfect timing for this to be out. Um, I guess I'll look at the cache page. Sets environment a variable. Okay, so I mean, just to rule this out, let's just put, because I don't trust this hyphen E thing. So I'm going to go here. I told you this thing always gives me trouble. So I'll do this instead. Um, and we'll see if it takes that. Okay, so executable file not found in path. Run C, create it failed, unable to start process container process. It could just be the order of these things that is throwing it off. Um, so I'm going to take this and put this down below here. So I can't really check the docs right now easily on the website. Let's see if that improves it. Yeah, it cares about the order. So for whatever reason, this was not getting pasted in here. Maybe we, our command was too long. And so by executing here, we we're having less trouble. Here it's having issues connecting to the service pool. That makes sense because we're not running um, uh, the SQL server. So I'm just going to go here and run that selectively here. Okay. And actually, I should have been running uh, both that and I'm going to redo that Docker Compose Select Services. Uh, we're not necessarily we're going to be looking at DynamoDB local here, uh, but just, we'll start them up because they both rely on it. Okay. And so that should resolve uh, that issue here. Was this the one we ran it on? Nope.
going to make sure these ports are open. Uh, four, five, six, seven should be running. Yes, it is. Great. Uh, so we'll take a look here and see what we have. So that's fine. We'll go here and say API activities home. And uh, it's just hanging, which is cool. It's doing a query. It's because it, it can't seem to establish a connection right now to the back end. Um, so oh, 5432 is right there. Mm, I think the, the key, key difference here is that our um, Postgres server is actually now just localhost because we're now executing this not from Docker Compose, but from here, right? So we'll just hit up and try this again. Actually, sorry, uh, not this part, um, this part here, sorry. So we'll do this here localhost, that's probably our problem. And we'll try this again. And maybe we'll also need to switch this over to localhost as well. Again, it's just how you start it up. So, because they're not starting the same way as the other one. Okay, well, I'm not sure why that's happening there right now, but um, I don't want to worry about that. What I want to worry about is whether this is actually producing an error or not, so, or if it's going to um, hot reload or do other stuff. So this isn't mounting it, so whatever's in there is what it's going to be running. Um, but I want to see what happens if we run into an error. So what I'm going to do is pur purposely jank one of our endpoints. So I'm going to go into the... Uh, app.py here, if I can find it. Yes, it is. And then we're going to go down to our API health check and we're going to purposely raise an error or cause a problem. Uh, where is it? Here. So I wonder if I could just introduce a syntax error or something. Um, I'm just trying to think what would cause an error. Maybe if I like said, hello, I just went uh, do this here. Mm. I'm trying to think how we could raise an error. Maybe like try to call a function that doesn't exist there. I suppose what we could do is just start this up the regular way and then um, see if that actually raises an error. And then if it does, then we can then go ahead and uh, rebuild the production and, and then test this, okay? That's what I'm thinking. And I'm just going to make a new folder here called run. Okay, and then I'm going to make a new folder in here called build. And that way, <laughs> when we build stuff, we don't have to keep figuring out how to use those build commands while we're waiting here. So I'm just waiting for all that stuff to start up. And while that's happening, I'm just going to be uh, productive. Um, build, build, build. What do we do for the build? I guess we didn't um, have to do anything special. So I'm going to go here. New file. Backend. Flask prod. And I'm just going to paste this in here. And then we will say docker build uh, hyphen t backend flask uh, prod and then the file will be docker file.prod I suppose that's a similar process here for the front end so we'll say front end react js I think the key difference here is we have that code here. So docker build, which is here. Uh, this, this will just save me a lot of time if I paste this in here so that when we need to rebuild this, it's a lot easier. Um, so we'll go here and paste that in. And I'm just going to rename that as dot prod. And now I'm or sorry, uh, yeah, prod. So now you can see really, it would really, really help if I extracted these, extracted these out as environment variables, uh, since now they're hard coded into multiple places, which is not great. Um, okay, so. This is now started up. Um, 
And so what was I doing? Oh, we were gonna see if this works in development properly. So I'll just open this up as per normal. And I just wanna see if this is gonna raise an error um, API health check here. Great, so this is what we're seeing. Um, it said there was like, the debugger caught the WSGI issue and it was saying like there was a way to interactively execute stuff. I don't see that here. Um, and we didn't turn debug mode off, it's on. So that security risk they were talking about saying like, hey, you could execute any random code. I'm not sure if that's true, at least not in this version because I, I can't see it. But still, we don't wanna see this, this stuff, right? Um, and so I just wanna go over to the uh, this one here and just see what happens if we say no debug. We're just gonna do this temporarily, okay? And I'm going to do Docker Compose up again. We'll just say uh, more build scripts, more scripts. Well, I don't wanna commit this change, so maybe I'll just wait here till this starts up and we'll check it in a second, okay? All right, so what we'll do here is take a look and open up our uh, backend again. And so what I'm hoping uh, we'll see is no Okay, so now it says internal server error. So that's what we want to happen. So that makes sense there. So we'll take out the debug flag. And so the next thing is really just to uh, test that. I gotta take a quick break. So what I'm gonna do uh, is just commit what I have here <laughs> and I'll be back here. We'll pick it up here in a second, okay? Um, but you know, clearly we're setting up that, that thing. So I usually don't do hard breaks like this right here, but I'll have to and we'll come back here and I'll reopen this environment, okay? 